this this area is is almost like stepping into uh, through the looking glass into into Wonderland. He's right here, ten feet. See him, see that tail. And it's full of different uh, kinds of birds and fish and sea grasses and black mangroves. He was horrible to catch. He nearly ruined my hand. <laughs> it's one of the most unique ecosystems along the Texas Gulf Coast. In the past eight years, Texas has had an increase of over 150,000 anglers licensed to fish in salt water. Go again. And many of those people are fishing in shallow saltwater flats. But biologists see a troubling trend. Inexperienced boaters are endangering this entire ecosystem by destroying the seagrass that lies just below these shallow waters. If we don't find creative management strategies, these seagrasses will disappear and the great fishing will disappear with it. That's the bottom line. Just a few inches below the surface of these saltwater flats grow beds of seagrass. These grasses form the foundation of a food chain that sustains the entire bay, turning the sun's energy into food for all aquatic life. This is really typical of life in a seagrass bed and demonstrates one of its primary functions and roles as a nursery area. If, uh, if you look really closely through here, you'll see there's lots of juvenile and baby shrimp, lots of juvenile pinfish, and lots of juvenile croaker. They're a food source for a variety of organisms that live in the bay. If we didn't pull very far, and you can see how many organisms that we, we collected just in this seine. Anglers have traditionally made their way into the saltwater flats by using long poles. But during the mid-1980s, a new type of boat began popping up along the flats. It was, appropriately enough, called a flats boat. And it could maneuver in waters as shallow as six to eight inches. Almost overnight, flats boats created an easy access to these prime fishing areas. Run deep, fish shallow. That's the way the, the people fished here 50 years ago. They would run in the deep sloughs and get out and wade the shallow flats and everybody respected the shallow flats until flats boats came in. Today, many new anglers don't understand the importance of the seagrass beds, nor have they completely mastered their boats. Game warden Albert Flores monitors the traffic on these waters. Most wardens will receive calls all hours of day or night Someone's stuck in the flats. Someone's run a boat aground. The result is habitat destruction. The damage becomes obvious, especially in aerial photography. If you get up in a plane, you see that these flats are crisscrossed with a tremendous amount of prop scarring. Prop scars create troughs and ditches that crisscross seagrass beds. These scars occur when a boat propeller scrapes the bottom of a seagrass bed, uprooting the grass roots and surrounding sediments. See, there's a prop scar where somebody didn't slow down before they got up to this, this shallow area or this flat area. So it's a great fishing area, but you just can't run an outboard motor across it when the water's this shallow. It looks like there's grass growing in here again, but most of it's just dead seagrass or marine algae or other kinds of vegetation that have collected in here. The amount of time required for a prop scar to heal is highly variable. In the best case, a scar in a sandy shoal grass flat may recover in a year. Scars in a soft bottom containing turtle grass may take from two to seven years. Scars that channel current down them can erode deeper and wider and may never recover. Now we've got a guy that wasn't raised on the water, but he's got money enough to buy a $30,000 flats boat, and nobody told him how to use it. They just told him it'll run in six inches of water, so he does. And that guy's got to be educated and needs to learn enough about fish and fish habits to where he doesn't just blast across every flat in the area and run it for everybody that's down here for the weekend. This is how flats boats are potentially so destructive. 
We saw our water line on this boat was right about here while, while we had the boat in the water. So from here to the bottom of the boat, that's eight inches. Now, if you tilt your engine down so that you can take off, from the bottom of the boat to the bottom of the engine is about another eight inches. For this boat to float without touching bottom would be over 16 inches. You know, the seagrass is probably about six inches, so you'd want to be about 30 inches off the bottom. So that whenever you take off and the back of the boat squats to take off, that would keep you above the seagrass and keep you from chopping up or cutting up the seagrass. Oh yeah, nice redfish. And with so many people fishing on the flats, every angler must be as courteous as they can. Come here, baby. Use your motor to get to the flats, but not to get through the flats. When you're approaching shallow water, shut down your engine and lift your motor out of the water. Use the wind to drift across the flat, or pull through the water, or use your trolling motor. The idea is to push, pull, or troll until you find a depth of 30 inches. That way, you'll preserve the seagrass and allow the whole ecosystem to flourish. We don't want to see this wonderful resource be physically degraded. And we also don't want to destroy the kind of experience that we're looking for out here on these flats, that being kind of a wilderness experience. It's an important thing, and I don't, I don't think we, we should uh, let it go by by just putting our heads in the sand. On our new seagrass protection regulation, it's going to To further protect seagrass, a regulation went into effect in May 2006, prohibiting the uprooting of seagrass by propeller in the Redfish Bay State Scientific Area. The area is completely open to access, and informational signs are posted at boat ramps all around the Redfish Bay area. These signs have information about seagrasses, their importance in the environment, and how to boat safely in seagrasses. Catching the big fish is every angler's dream. Nice trout. And that dream depends on every angler knowing their boat, understanding the bays, and having the skill to maneuver through the shallow seagrass flats. Each of us has to educate ourselves to be better anglers, to better understand the importance of habitat. And I think through that, we have the opportunity to preserve this resource, to conserve it, and make sure that uh, it's here for all generations of Texans for many years to come.